Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us wherever you might be watching across Africa and beyond. Tonight we host Gabriel Nengatu, Regional Director for the East African Centre of the Africa Development Bank. He shares his perspective on Africa. You get to have your say as well. And as always, we have Africa's top 10. You're watching the Africa Leadership Dialogues. I'm Julie Gishuru. Gabriel Nengatu is the African Development Bank Regional Director for the East Africa Regional Center, which is based in Nairobi. Originally born in Ethiopia, he's worked for the African Development Bank for several years now and has direct oversight responsibility for six countries in the region, namely Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda and the Seychelles. However, his responsibilities also include implementation support for the bank's portfolio in 13 countries in the region. In addition to the six just mentioned, he has direct oversight of Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, Sudan, South Sudan, Comoros and Somalia. Let's get his insights into Africa. Thank you, Gabriel, for making time for the Africa Leadership Dialogues. So looking at the situation across the continent, uh, countries are at, at very many different levels. We've still got some conflict situations. In many countries, we're in, uh, seeing increasing space in terms of democracy, increased uh, levels of transparency, good governance. Um, where is Africa, though? When you look at the complete situation from the, world, from the bank's perspective, African Development Bank, what, what's your comment? Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for uh, inviting me on. Uh, I think uh, from our perspective, uh, Africa is beginning to turn the corner on, on its own future. Africa itself, it's not others doing it for Africa, but Africa is turning the corner. Uh, there has been tremendous progress in the area of governance, uh, tremendous progress in the area of prudent economic management, natural resource management, and so on. However, for every successful story, there is uh, the exceptions of Mali and the Central Africa and so on. But overall, uh, Africa is on the right trajectory of growth, prosperity, and prudent management. So we are very bullish, very positive about developments in, in this continent. Just looking at your key areas, and infrastructure is a big one, um, projects uh, across the continent. The conflict situation in the DRC presents such a challenge for the continent also because of just the resources that, that, that are within that country. What is the way forward? Well, yeah, the DRC is a very good uh, example of, uh, of a country that's endowed with virtually all types of resources, human and, and natural, mm -hmm. and yet beset by uh, issues of governance. Uh, these are legacy problems, Julie. They are not problems that were created yesterday. They, they, they are legacies of the colonial uh, setup in that region and uh, will continue to linger. Uh, what is encouraging, uh, I should say, is that Africans in the region are taking the leadership on resolving this issue. For example, President Museveni of Uganda is leading the dialogue between the conflicting parties in that region. The Great Lakes uh, institutions are actively working with the African Union to find solutions to these problems. But uh, these are not problems that were created overnight and they certainly are not going away overnight. But Again, what is encouraging is that people are talking and not shooting at each other. Uh, the progress, of course, will take time and uh, we have to be patient, but uh, so long as the, the discussion, the dialogue is going on and African leaders in the region and beyond are committed to this finding a solution, I'm confident that uh, 
in the very foreseeable future we'll see a uh, reform in this direction. Right. I mean, a critical concern, the DRC, just because, uh, you know, of its ability to power and to grow the African continent. But staying on infrastructure and resources, what are you most excited about in Africa right now? Oh, there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, take the DRC. Uh, the DRC alone, if we could get the Grand Inga project mm -hmm. up and running, it has, a, <clears throat> it has the potential to produce up to 40,000 megawatts of power. This is enough power to light up the, the, the entire continent. Uh, coming closer to this region, uh, you will find uh, developments in Kenya that are very encouraging. The LAPSET project that promises to lead to greater integration of Kenya, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Uganda, that's another promising, encouraging uh, trend. Uh, if you look at Tanzania, Tanzania has come into all types of resources again, and uh, with the kind of leadership progress that you're seeing in Tanzania, I think in a very short time, uh, these countries will pull, will be the engines that will move the cont the, this part of the continent forward. If you look at Rwanda, I think the, the conflict issues notwithstanding, the growth is very impressive. The doing business survey consistently shows Rwanda to be one of the best places to do business in. Uh, if you look at Burundi, peace is coming to Burundi. Next year they have an election and they are already, the opposition and the government are already talking. Uh, if you look at Ethiopia, the power generation capacity in that region is moving forward. We are also helping to promote this East Africa power pool, which will allow countries to trade amongst themselves in terms of energy. So energy produced in Ethiopia can be sold in Kenya, and Kenya can sell to Tanzania. So the region is, is, is becoming dynamic, and there's reason to be very optimistic. That said, there are mm -hmm. still some issues. Uh, Cross-border trade within the region remains a challenge. These non-tariff barriers continue to be a challenge, but I'm happy to say that the East African community, ourselves and others, are working to address those issues. So in a few years, I think we'll get the policy fundamentals in the right place and uh, this region should be able to, to move forward. It's, it's great to hear those issues are being worked on. A lot of frustration in the private sector, a lot of frustration with, with even you know, the smallest people trying to trade across, across borders, finding such difficulty. Um, for a young African watching and listening to all the potential and all the possibilities that are very real, but wondering, where does this, where do I come in? You know, how does this affect my life? I'm struggling to find a job. I'm struggling to survive. What does all this mean to me? What would you say, Gabriel? Well, you know, at times uh, it may seem a bit frustrating uh, because these results don't manifest themselves in, in the very short term. Uh, for a young African, the, the best thing one can do to prepare oneself to take advantage of these opportunities are first, a good sound education. There is no substitute <clears throat> for a good education. The discipline, the work discipline to, to, to either be employed or create opportunities for self-employment, but to train in areas that are in demand. Uh, I always tell colleagues in Kenya, for example, that when you think of a market, don't think of Kenya only. The entire East Africa region is a market for experts from Kenya or Rwanda or Burundi or Tanzania or Ethiopia for that matter. So you need to think a bit more broadly, whether you are trading, whether you are manufacturing, whether you have skills to sell, the strategy should be that you think regionally because this region, whether we like it or not, is going to be economically integrated or is economically integrating. And with the kind of work we, the African Development Bank is doing, building highways, building energy superhighways, leading the uh, regional integration strategy. It is no longer my skills are only relevant within these borders. It's skills without borders across the region. So a young, aspiring East African should look to the entire region as an opportunity, prepare himself, herself, with the right kind of skills and knowledge, the right discipline, and I think the opportunities will manifest themselves.
Let's talk about your home country, uh, Gabriel, Ethiopia. Um, I'm always struck by a very young population w right. when I arrived there in Addis Ababa. And amazing construction going on everywhere. So fast growing, a, a youth bulge, like, you know, as is represented uh, across the continent. What's the socioeconomic situation and where do you see Ethiopia going? Well, right now, the uh, economic growth in Ethiopia is quite robust. Consistently, over the last 10 plus years, there has been uh, double digit growth uh, or near double digit growth over the past few years. However, as in most African countries, growth by itself is no longer news. What now matters is the quality of growth and the type of growth. While there is respectable growth taking place, it is not inclusive growth. Not everyone is benefiting from it. The rising tide is not lifting all the boats, so to speak. Therefore, the, the, the challenge of leadership in Ethiopia remains making sure that both growth is taking place, but also inclusive growth that lifts everyone. Now, there are many challenges in, in this regard, but currently the socioeconomic situation, I think, is, is, is rather positive and could grow even much more if we could embrace the other pockets of uh, poverty that continues to persist. But uh, overall, I think I'm very bullish uh, on the situation in Ethiopia. Yeah. There is good political stability. What now remains is for leadership that embraces all sectors of the society to be participants in, in the growth taking place. Stay with the Africa Leadership Dialogues. In, in terms of uh, the challenges of integrating our regions and then integrating the wider Africa, do you think that leadership across our countries is doing enough and building enough momentum and goodwill to, to get it done? You say it's being worked on, uh, but is this a process that is, is difficult? Is it, is it taking, and, and the feeling on the ground, it's taking too long. So is, is this a question of leadership and goodwill, do you think? Well, it's, it's a question of leadership and goodwill plus capacity. Okay. Uh, you see, with, with integration, uh, either you get in front of the curve or you will be left behind. Take, for example, the integration between southern Ethiopia and northern Kenya. The African Development Bank is about to complete the Mombasa Addis Ababa road. Now, this is a road, once it's completed, will automatically integrate southern Ethiopia to northern Kenya. Now, either leadership will have to set the policy and, and, and prepare the ground for it, or events by themselves will take over. Economically, these two regions are beginning to integrate. Look at uh, Tanzania and Kenya. We built this beautiful road uh, to Namanga, Arusha, connecting Kenya and Ethiopia, I mean, Tanzania and Kenya or at Malaba between Uganda and uh, Kenya. However, despite this beautiful road, trucks still come and get stranded for hours, sometimes for days at the border. Now, the next phase is for us to work with the member countries and other institutions to remove this non-tariff barrier so that goods, services can move freely. That way, the small trader in Kenya can trade in Tanzania and vice versa. But this, of course, takes time. Look at the most recent uh, initiative between the heads of states of Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. They've now agreed to free up the port of Mombasa. This is truly the gateway to Eastern and Central Africa. The effort by the current government in Kenya to revamp the port of Mombasa, to clear up, to make it efficient, may sound like a Kenyan initiative, but this is an entirely East African initiative. Will it happen tomorrow? Perhaps not, but the day after tomorrow it will happen. So I would like to think of it as the glass half full, then half empty. Then the Lapset project, when that comes on board, uh, southern Ethiopia, South Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, will be one seamless market for traders, for people who want to uh, do business in this region. So the trend is very promising. The direction of travel is in the right 
place and uh, it's a matter of time before we see the kind of impact that we wish to see. Well, it's, it's interesting. We hope governments are listening that uh, indeed, I, I think a very powerful uh, uh, statement there that, you know, the, the communities and the traders will respond and then the trade will happen if, 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 if you're not there leading it. So we ask our governments, please, to, to, to lead us um, towards a completely integrated economic uh, uh, union of sorts. Let's, let's talk about the debate on Africa looking east or west. <laughs> what, what's your take on, on, on this whole issue? Well, in my view, it's Africa looking both east and west and center. Uh, mm -hmm. In this business, I think there are no permanent uh, friends, so to speak. It's more permanent allies. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Africa has had a relationship with the east and the west since time immemorial. Uh, most people talk about China as a newcomer, but China is not a newcomer. China, I, I read somewhere that China was one of the first countries to recognize Kenya's independence very early on. Uh, China helped build the Tazara Railway between Tanzania and Zambia in the early 1960s. So China is not a newcomer. But it does not have to be China at the cost of the the West, you know, it can be both the East and the West. What Africa, what the leadership in Africa needs to do is do what is right for Africa, what's best for Africa. It's good that there are options. You can shop around, speak to all partners, uh, and at the end of the day, you do what's best for your people and your country. And I'm happy to say that I know Ethiopia does the same, Kenya does the same, and so do all the other countries. They speak to all sides and where you get the best investment, the best technology, the best manpower, you go, you, you use that, uh, that source. Right. Um, just on your personal view of the continent as, as an African, you've worked abroad for many years. Um, but they say an African heart is always going to be at home. You always feel the connection with home. So what do you feel about the growth over the con of the continent over the past few decades, it's for Kenya, it's 50 years since independence. Many countries are marking a similar you know, right, uh, right. A timeline of independence. What's your take when you sit back as an, a citizen of Africa of sorts and look at the situation? I think these first 50 years have been uh, a mixed, mixed bag, uh, really. Uh, Tremendous progress has been made. Uh, I think the continent today that peace with itself is a more prosperous continent. Uh, it's at peace with itself, with its neighbors, and so on. Uh, we've come a long way, but there's still even a longer way to travel. It's a longer journey. Uh, we've learned a lot from the first 50 years, uh, but you're beginning to see a more confident, a more vibrant, self-assured, inward-looking Africa emerge. An Africa that says, I can do this for myself. And where I can't, I will go to my partners, left, right, center. But it is no longer sitting and waiting for others to do things. So I'm very positive that the next decade, decades to come, with the population bulge that we have, with the issues of ICT, how that has leveled the playing field. Uh, look at your own country. Kenya, I think the ICT sector in Kenya is led by people who are under 25. I mean, if you are over 25, they think you are over the hill. Uh, look at the emerging middle class. I mean, Africa, I think, today has the largest and the most, the, the, the growing, uh, growing middle class. And that's not just a consumer middle class, but a middle class that demands accountability and transparency from the way it's governed. A middle class that pays its tax but holds its government accountable. So I think the next 50 years will see a totally transformed Africa. An Africa that is not necessarily mimicking the East or the West, but that's looking for Afro-pessimism, uh, Afro-optimism. You know, there's the Afro-pessimist, the Afro-optimist. I'm an Afro-optimist. Okay. Yes. And then I am an Afro-realist. <laughs> okay. Which, which says, yeah, uh, we don't want to overdo the Africa, we are African line, or you don't mm -hmm. want to lament what's going wrong, but you're saying whatever needs to be done, we are able to do it. And what we cannot do, we'll 
find others to help us do it. So I think that level of confidence that you're beginning to see in the young leadership, look at your own country, the type of leadership, the, 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 the recent cabinet appointments from 42 to what, 18 or so cabinets, technocrats running the countries, the type of reforms taking place. 10, 15 years ago, these were unthinkable reforms. Today, reforms are taking place and governments are staying the course. And these are very encouraging signs and I'm very optimistic as a citizen, as a citizen of this continent that our time has come. Africa is a continent that's going places. It's a continent in a hurry to go places. And I don't think anything will now stop Africa. There's no turning back. You know, we'll have these few setbacks here and there, but we'll continue to look at the glass half full and sure enough, it will be full before Soon we enough. know it. Thank you for that. It's very powerful words. I want you, Gabriel, to look into the camera and to get to the Africa we all want to get to, of prosperity, of transparency. Um, what does each of us as an African need to do? I think as citizens, we, 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 we have an obligation to, to ourselves and to our, to our uh, continent, to our society. Uh, Africa is the sum total of each and every one of us. There's no thing called Africa that sits out there and we are out here. No, we, we are Africa. It's you, I, and everyone else in this room, that's Africa. And if each one of us pulls its weight and pulls in the same direction and pulls together, I'm convinced that the time is right, the case is strong, and it is now our opportunity to bend the arc of history. Bend the arc of history from a legacy of exclusion and nepotism and so on to a time when Africa will now be a shining continent where each citizen has a future and can look to the future and say, tomorrow I will be that person I want to be. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Julie. you for your time. Thank you very much.